Okay, um, so for this section we are going to talk about uh, derived dimensions. Um, so before we do that, let me just show you this is the standard uh, console demo uh, setup that we have. Uh, this is our ledger form where we have the account structure setting. Right? So we have uh, account structure set up for our PL accounts and some for our balance accounts. Uh, so let's just look at the PL account. And you can see that the standard we have just for PL accounts, we have business unit department, cost center, and item group um, as, uh, as financial dimensions. So, um, so once we see that, so let's jump into and let look at uh, derived dimensions. So we find derived dimension by going to close this one. So going again to our general ledger under our financial dimensions. So chart of account dimensions, financial dimensions here. You can see here we have all our financial dimensions. Um, and let's say I'll just select business unit. So under here, the business unit, we can look at our dimension values that are associated to our business unit. But we have this function called uh, derived dimensions. Okay. So you can see our dimension units, and this is oh, one home, auto, IT consulting, electronics, boarding, etc. Uh, so um, the function here with derived dimensions is that um, sort of um, to pre-select another financial dimension depending on uh, what business unit, in this case business unit, you are selecting. So let's say that we have a business unit. Um, yeah, let's say for the business unit we want to add a certain department. So we'll select a segment called department and we'll add that, that segment. I want to uh, notice here there's this called prevent changes to the right value. We have it set to no. Uh, so we are not preventing any changes, but we could do that if you wanted to uh, make it set in stone um, uh, the der derived dimension value. As it is now, we're simply just suggesting the value. We are not, um, we are not setting it in stone or set it to mandatory. Okay because we have this one set to no. And another one you can see we have, we also have this checkbox that's called replace existing dimension value with derived values. Um, and we have that one unchecked as, as well. So so this one, uh, so this one simply, if it's unchecked, it does not enforce uh, the value that we set here. So, so maybe I'll show you a quick example of uh, the other option, how that Let's say the business unit that we say for our auto business unit, we always uh, use a certain department, which is the operation department. Okay, uh, and, we, and we hit save to that. So um, what we get now, if we uh, let's just uh, open another tab so we can keep this one open. So let's just try to um, go and open now a uh, general journal and we'll try to post something with that um, uh, business unit as a financial dimension. So uh, we'll go and post something with business unit 002 and see if it populates uh, with, uh, with department 23. So that's the that's the exercise here. So we'll go to the general journals, create a new journal here. Okay, so we'll just select it. Let's just select a, an expense account and we'll select our business unit auto 002. And you can see immediately it now um, suggested our department 023. So at this point, we should be able to, because we're not enforcing and selecting another department. 
right? As our financial dimension. So no problem there. Uh, let's just use a paid cash as our offset here. And uh, do a 500, $500 debit here. Um, so, so this uh, journal should post. So you can see, so in this example, it simply just suggested it. Uh, we were still able to go in and change it. Um, so let's now go back to the derived dimensions here. And let's just create a new one as well. Uh, let's say we'll do electronics and say electronics are always using uh, IT departments, for example, as their department, right? Um, so um, what I will do now, I will hit this one. So I will say replace existing dimension value with the right value. And, um, and since it didn't come up now, I should um, um, say I should be able to say prevent department value changes. So let's just do that. Um, okay. So you can see now it changed here to prevent changes for department. And we have this one, replace existing dimension value with derived value, okay? So now it should be more kind of uh, mandatory. Uh, so this is uh, more relevant than, of course, the finance department. They're more using a kind of an allocation type, right? That you always want to have this department for that type of business unit. Um, and and uh, that needs to be always true. Um, then you want to um, set it um, as you want as you do it right here. So when we have this one set, we'll go out and try and create a new journal and see. Uh, let me just see which one we created. We did the 005, and that should be now the IT department, which would should be the 025 department, right? So we create a new journal journal here. Okay. Line and we'll just select an expense account here and let's select now our um, electronics business unit and you can see the IT department uh, uh, defaulted to that. So let's say that we want to uh, uh, change that. There's 23 here. So let's do 23 and see if it accept. And we get the message, the part department dimension with value 023 is not allowed due to derived dimension rules. The allowed value should be 025, right? So you are now not allowed to have to go back and change it to 25. And you can see the message uh, disappear, right? And now we should be able to uh, post this one. So let's just use the petty cast here again. And there's the description I wrote it in. It should have been in David's side. And we should now be able to post that. And once that posted. So that's two examples of how you can use derived dimensions, as you can see, very, very helpful. Um, where you either use it kind of as a suggestion, just so people don't forget to um, to fill out their, fin uh, their financial dimensions or with the derived dimension, or you can use it as a mandatory. So simply it's, it's uh, more written in stone. Um, which dimension, which department dimensions should go after a certain business unit. So hopefully you find that little example uh, useful. Um.